Welcome to the Inflamed Sisters Thriving Podcast. This is Katina Morrison, and the Inflamed Sisters Thriving Podcast is a safe space created to guide women living with chronic illness to uncover their purpose by doing what they were meant to do, move in power by advocating for themselves, and accelerate their growth in health, career, and business. You will learn how to stop hiding and start thriving. We will inspire, educate, and motivate you as we show you and Flame Sisters Thrive Together Always. Today, I would like to welcome my amazing guest, and her name is Heather Sunderland. Welcome. How are you doing today? Great, Katina, and I am just so honored to be here. I've uh, so enjoyed getting to know you and uh, love the community you've created for others to come, be encouraged, uplifted, um, and encouraging them and helping them to thrive. Oh, I appreciate that so much. And that's what drew, drew me to you is, is that you are a person who is really making a difference in the chronic illness community and also helping educate us in a way that I haven't seen many do. So that's why I wanted to have you here. And as um, we talk about Heather, I would love for you to introduce yourself and tell us about what you do. What I do. Um, I am a functional health coach. Uh, I help people. I come alongside them on their journey and um, I support them, but I, I do it a little differently than a lot of health coaches. My focus has been very much in the, the mold, the Lyme community and chronic inflammatory response syndrome and with others with autoimmune diseases. Um, but I've, like I said, I do it a little differently than other health coaches. I've been using um, organic superfoods uh, to to help people restore health and to just deeply nourish them and help them to, to gently detox. And yeah, that's what I do. But I, I've, I've been through that journey myself and that gives me um, an inside scoop to, to walk the path with them. Amazing. And that's the, uh, the wonderful part about what you do and what many of the um, women that I've interviewed on this podcast do is that they know the experience of the chronic illness community because they went through it themselves. And the fact that you're using your knowledge, not only by what you've experienced, but also your knowledge from your professional background, as well as um, the research and everything that you've done. The same for me, being a person who lives with rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia, using my knowledge as a nurse to combine mm -hmm. that to educate and inspire people as well. So I, I love the community that not only I have um, had the privilege to build, but that I continue to build as I come in contact with amazing um, practitioners and, and, and people like you. So thank you so much for coming. So let's get into this. I would love to hear about your personal journey because one of the things about you is that you found that chronic Ill illness symptoms and autoimmune disease symptoms can be really steeped in and based in exposure to mold. So can you tell us how you um, started that journey to learn this uh, and, and how it brought you to where you are today? Sure. I'm going to try to make it not too long because I got mm -hmm. sick a very long time ago. Looking back, um, I, I had asthma as a child. Um, I had allergies. I had digestive issues. And when I was a young adult, I developed uh, what they called labeled as fibromyalgia. Um, and we treated it as fibromyalgia. At that time, I was a dietitian and a diabetic educator. And I actually continued to get sicker and sicker until um, I had to literally close my private practice as a dietitian and stop working because I was so disabled. And as time went on, I just continued to develop more symptoms and more labels. Um, and I was put on medications and I, I didn't know there was another option. And so from the age of 35 uh, until about 56, I was very disabled uh, with neuropathy and trouble walking and standing. And I think it was about the age of 50, I was diagnosed with chronic Lyme that I had had probably all those years. Um, and then I went to health coaching school during that time. And it was actually another health coach who had reached out to me and said, I think maybe you've been exposed to a water damaged building. 
And I thought I had just moved to the desert in Arizona. And I thought there's not a lot of water in the desert. I didn't think that seemed very likely, but it triggered my memory that I we had had a water leak in our home in Pennsylvania. We had addressed it quickly, uh, but I now learned we didn't address it properly when you're dealing, um, when you're talking about mold. And all of myself and my son and my husband, we all developed very different health issues um, not long after that water leak. Um, so I actually went and got tested um, and I found out I was um, one of those people who could not detox mold. And in reality, one in every four people genetically um, is unable to detox mold. Um, and I also could not detox Lyme, Lyme's waste products. And so those two things were really adding to my toxic bucket uh, genetically. And it turns out I had been exposed to mold since childhood. Once I told my parents, they told me my child, childhood bedroom had black mold when they had pulled out a window in the wall. So that explained you know, a lot of issues looking back, the asthma um, and the digestive issues. Wow. And this journey that you had, I think you said your symptoms started between the ages of 35 and 50? I actually got sick at 30, um, 30. This, and at 35, I stopped working because I was so Got disabled you. and such chronic acute pain. And I actually went on fentanyl, Vicodin, you know, medications um, mm -hmm. initially to treat fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. And the symptoms just got progressively worse year after year. Um, I mean, a whole host of, you know, it, it was a long journey. So there's a whole host of labels that it came attached to that. Yeah. Um, ligament laxity was one label, you know, that I spent a lot of time chasing along with chasing, treating the Lyme, but I did not get better because we weren't addressing the root. And I think, I mean, in general, all health coaches, I mean, we want to help people get to the root and that's the bottom line. And if you're missing the root of what's causing you to have an autoimmune issue, um, in my case, I wasn't even able to function and thrive with those issues because we were missing the root. And that toxicity was really impacting my health very negatively. Wow. I appreciate you um, sharing all of the details because I know what you shared is going to help a lot of people um, because anyone in, who is listening to the podcast or viewing from YouTube, if you are having these symptoms and you're just not getting better with the treatment, there's other core things that you need to take a look at. The most important thing is finding the source of the illness. And I know for me, um, with I have a, a large family history of autoimmune disease and chronic illness, uh, but I know my exposure to toxins as a child had an impact to the conditions I have. For example, you see me now, I'm a natural haired, curly young lady, but I had my first hair relaxer that contained so many chemicals that are toxic um, when I was probably three years old. And by the time I was 11, I had um, symptoms of endometriosis, symptoms of rheumatoid mm -hmm. arthritis, symptoms of fibromyalgia. So that all with, started with my first menstrual cycle. So imagine someone at 11 years old having these symptoms. Um, but the core issue is very young, those toxins and those chemicals. And they found that, of course, endometriosis and, and fibroids, which I also had and, you know, ovarian cysts, all of these things can be tied to exposures to um, toxins and chemicals. So um, I definitely understand you. And mold is a very dangerous one um, to be exposed to for long term. You mentioned symptoms of asthma, chronic pain, um, even experiencing disability by the age of 35 um, for a condition that was never really explained. It was labeled. And I, I, I heard those words labeled. Um, so let's dig into that a little bit more. Lay these labels that people are given and how can they get to those core um, issues? Can you go a bit more into the symptoms that mold can present as, mold toxicity can present as? And, and first, let's explain what it is and then what it um, what symptoms they can present as and those, lab un those labels that are why they're not appropriate. Well, mold is all around us. You know, it's outside in nature. 
and outside in nature, it's all, it's in check, you know, but when mold is in a building that's enclosed, the way we build today, there's not a lot of circulation of the air, especially new homes. They're built very tightly um, so that mold isn't in check with nature. Um, and if mold is growing or there's a water leak and it's growing behind a wall, it's not getting sunlight. So it enhances the growth of the mold. Um, and that's where it becomes more of a problem, especially if you don't see it. In reality, 70% of the homes in the U.S. have mold. And you, I'm sorry, 50% of the homes in the U.S. have mold. And 70% of the time, you never see it. So you do not have to see mold to be being exposed to it. And it's actually not the mold that's the issue. It's the waste that the mold creates, which is called a mycotoxin. So even if mold is remediated and they remove the source of the mold, you have to remove the mycotoxins that are left in the air and that then circulate um, through the ventilation of your house. So sometimes people remediate and they don't even have somebody who really is remediating properly and they think they've gotten it, but they haven't. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then the symptoms that uh, Sorry. are- Sorry, yeah, I didn't answer all your questions. <laughs> That's Sorry. okay. No. So mold is considered the great mimicker. So it can mm -hmm. mimic so many different uh, illnesses and diseases. But classic symptoms, neuropathy, nerve pain, um, static shocks, getting electricity when you hit a light switch, brain fog, uh, fatigue, aches and pains, frequent urination, to name a few. There's a list of um, 37 symptoms um, of mold. And they affect every single system of the body when you have, and they can. Some people may present with just a few different systems of the body. It depends on the amount of exposure, your body's um, ability to detox, and how long you've been exposed. Mm -hmm. um, so survivingmold.com is a great website um, that does go over the symptoms and um, some of the pre-diagnostic tools that I use with clients to determine you know, if they're dealing with mold, and especially if somebody presents with several autoimmune conditions, I tend to look at mold as a possibility as, as an underlying root along with toxicity as an underlying root to the illness. Um, but people, I have people in the same household who have been exposed to high levels of mold. And like one example, I have a, a dear friend who presented very much like I did with chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, she had Raynaud's, um, her husband had gall bladder issues and the daughter had digestive issues. Um, and she was, had a lot of depression and anxiety and all three of them had mold toxicity from their home. Wow. So they all presented very differently. So I think a lot of people are going to a doctor and a lot of people are be treating for symptoms, but doctors aren't trained in environmental illness. Um, and it's being missed and they're managing their symptoms, um, but they're not getting to the root because doctors aren't trained in this. I wasn't trained in it. It's my journey that gave me the education, not, not my training, sadly, as a functional health coach. A few months ago, I was introduced to an amazing product that I have added to my nutrition. That is Powerful. Powerful is carefully formulated to support your mind, body, and soul with one serving giving you 15 ingredients, powerful adaptogens, functional mushrooms, antioxidant rich spices, and zinc. Your body will be thriving. It's a tasty addition to my oatmeal, smoothies, tea, and juice that has given me exactly what I was looking for. I've seen improvements in my energy, skin, and gut health. And all its amazing ingredients naturally boost my immune system and are anti-inflammatory. A girl couldn't ask for more. I love this product and I suggest you try it too. Wow. I, I'm telling you, you and I have had multiple conversations and each time I talk to you, I learn a lot, um, but I also get a lot more insight, um, which is why even though I am a chronic illness coach and a health coach, why I love connecting with other coaches, because I want to make sure that I'm able to um, 
be able to refer my clients to the right people or people who could be potential clients to the people mm -hmm. who can help them. I've actually referred um, a few to yeah. um, mm -hmm. clients to you as well, because I'm like, wait a minute, this isn't my area. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to make sure that you are um, getting the help that you need, uh, because when you've been through the journey, that's how you're able to um, understand these things even more. So we've talked about the symptoms um, that are associated with mold toxicity. We've also talked about your journey as a person who, who experienced exposure as a young child to mold, experienced uh, exposure to it as an adult, um, and the impact that it had on your family as a result, but the fact that you didn't get answers for so long. So can you tell me how have you learned um, to get the answers that are necessary to explain the, the core issue of mold toxicity and um, how you're helping others to get those answers too? I think what I learned has been through my own journey, the very, the very mm -hmm. traditional approach to addressing mold is to see a practitioner who specializes in mold toxicity. Um, Dr. Shoemaker, he's one of the big names in mold toxicity and came up with the testing that people can do. So I saw a practitioner who, who addressed things using traditional binders. Um, I did that approach and sadly I didn't get any better. I, I did that approach for five months um, and I had been extremely depleted nutritionally. I was down to about 10 foods that I could eat due to um, digestive issues I had developed and my walking was severely limited. Um, my standing was limited. I, I was very disabled and I was frustrated. And I actually met another coach who was using an approach that was very different uh, to what is being done with most holistic practitioners. And the approach was to, to deeply, deeply nourish the body and to use this nourishment and um, these organic superfoods to open up detox pathways. Um, and to help to start to open up detox pathways and restore the gut. So we were using a protocol with food to help help me detox. And then I was combining it with how to eat to detox. Um, and most practitioners do not combine how to eat for detox. You know, people might be told to eat paleo, but in truth, um, what I was doing was eating very alkaline and meats very acidic. So it was totally different than my training. Um, but within the third day on the protocol, I was adding in new food into my diet when I had only been on 10 foods a day. And every week I started to add in new foods. And for me, that was pretty amazing because I had been on tons of protocols to restore my gut. Um, but this protocol really just helped to support my body to decrease inflammation quickly and to start to get me detoxing. But it wasn't forcing detox like most binders do. They, they, they force detox whether you're ready or not. And if your pathways aren't open and your organs um, that are necessary for detox, like your lymphatic system and your bowels and your kidneys aren't ready to detox, you just get more backed up. And anytime you detox, whether it's mold or we're talking the hair care products you talked about, Katina, that you used, um, it's a process. And if your body pathways aren't open to get rid of those toxins, those toxins recirculate first before they leave the body. So people have symptoms when they're detoxing that aren't pleasant and they're much worse when your body's not supported and your pathways aren't open. Wow. So you have really cued into some, um, some things that are important for people to understand. Now, I do want you all to know that this discussion is educational. So we're not, um, we're not diagnosing or providing you medical advice. We're talking from our own experience and research, things that have worked for each of us and who ha that happens to work for our clients as well. So please don't get this, um, mis don't understand, misunderstand that um, we are telling you what to do with your body and that you have to go on a specific protocol or type of eating um, to um, make a difference in your health. But it did make a difference for me. Um, stopping exposure to things like hair relaxers, um, because, you know, 
us, us, us women of color, as African American and Black women, we we love sometimes to have that straight, silky hair that's shining. Um, but I had to learn how to um, embrace my natural hair because I saw the difference immediately when I stopped getting relaxers in my how my body responded to um, not being in the amount of chronic pain that I was in. Um, it was my even changes in my fatigue, but there was other things I had to change because it's in our shampoos, it's in our show, soaps. There's a lot of things that we expose ourselves that are toxic. Uh, but in this case, we focused on um, also, we focused on mold and its impact, but I also know the importance of food. When I went from um, eating foods that contained a lot of dairy, a lot of trans fats, a lot of, of those bad, unhealthy oils, sodium, you know, that was very high in sodium. When I tra transitioned to what I consider anti-inflammatory diet, it changed my life. Um, I could then my stomach, I no longer had IBD, you know, irritable bowel disease uh, or those symptoms anymore. So we really have to pay attention to what are we exposing ourselves to? Um, what are we placing on our bodies? What are we ingesting in our bodies? Uh, and then take a look at our history and see what are those unknown things that we could be exposing ourselves to like mold. So that's why I wanted to have this conversation because a lot of us could be inadvertently poisoning our bodies and not aware of it. So stories like Heather and stories like her clients is very important um, to get out there. So I, I'm so glad that I've had this opportunity to have this discussion with you, Heather. I also want to um, for you to share with us, like, what are the things that you from your personal experience, recommend for a person who is ex who is experiencing what you personally experienced in life? The first thing I always recommend is them testing their environment. Because, you know, even if you're trying to heal, if you're in an environment that's toxic. Um, so I always recommend people start with the ERMI dust cloth test. Um, typically, you can get it through micrometrics or enviro biomics. Um, and it's usually about $240. It's a dust cloth. Basically, you're dusting part of your home and you send it off to a lab to analyze it for 36 different uh, water molds, dangerous water molds. And then there's a score associated with that um, for the five most dangerous water molds that give us a sense of is the environment contributing you know, to your health problems. It will not tell you where the mold is. So that's sort of just the beginning of the rabbit hole that people go down. Um, and my home actually did have mold in the desert. Um, I had black mold and uh, Aspergillus niger and Stachy, which are, are common molds of building material. We did not have any mold in the house, but it was building material that had mold. And we had elevated levels, not horrendous, but not great. Um, but I have been able to restore my health. Um, you know, but some people are very sensitive and the levels have to be super duper low for them to get better. But you can have a house that's, you know, doesn't have water damage, but if the building material was either pre-infected with mold, which is very common nowadays, um, that can contribute to your toxic bucket, even if it may not be high levels. It's all those things that you talked about, Katina, the hair dyes, which obviously I stopped dyeing my hair, um, you know, skincare, hair care all of it um, plays a role um, in affecting our toxic bucket. And, and we have to sort of address all of those pieces, but our environment is a huge piece. Um, and mold can be a part of that along with off gassing of, you know, new carpeting and furniture. Um, and some people, once that toxic bucket overflows, then they just become very sensitive to everything. Wow. So you have just opened my eyes and I know it's opened quite a few of the eyes of our listeners and ears as well. So it's very important for us to understand that we can all be inadvertently exposed to mold and that and many other toxins. Our goal is to our goal should be to reduce our health risk by reducing our exposure to things that can make us sick. And um, sometimes our symptoms of autoimmune disease and chronic illness can be steeped in what we are being exposed to and not necessarily just our genetics, for example. 
So I appreciate you for sharing all of this, your wisdom, your research that you've had, um, as well as um, what you're doing to help others. Can you tell us, please, where we can find you at? Sure. I mean, don't have a website right now. It was taken down when I was really ill. It's in the process of being put back up. But for now, um, Heather Sklar 842 on Instagram. And I do have a YouTube channel. Um, I would just say DM me at Heather Sklar 842 on Instagram or health coaching by Heather at gmail.com. The website will be up soon. Um, it's being revamped at, the, at this time. And the name of that website? When it's up, I ha it's health coaching by Heather. Okay. Com. Yeah. Excellent. So make sure that you reach out to Heather um, Sunderland. If you feel like you may have been exposed to mold or if you have symptoms of illness that you ha cannot explain, um, and sometimes it just may be that she can give you those tips that you need to find out the core issues. And I appreciate you so much for everything that you are doing for the chronic illness community and the that you're opening our eyes to things that many of us may not even be aware of. What I do um, look forward to is connecting with you again because we always have amazing conversations. In fact, before we started this podcast, I had to say, let me turn this um, this on record button on so that we don't miss all of this good information. So thank you so much. And to all of my listeners, I want to remind you that... Um, you know, it is such a privilege to be able to um, to serve the chronic illness community. But what I appreciate even more so is the support that each of you are giving to me and how you can continue to support me and those who I bring on um, the stage is to like, share and follow, even subscribe. Um, every like, say, follow and subscribe makes a difference. Um, so what we can do also is request that you remember this, my sisters, we may be in flame, but we are still here. And as long as we are here, let's thrive together because inflamed sisters thrive together always. Have a wonderful day, everyone. And it's been a pleasure.